Hello friends, welcome back to Endo Tales from Life. In this video, we are going to watch about one of the most important clinical aspect of endodontics that is about root canal sealers. Yes, we are going to discuss about the various sealers that have been used in the past, in the present and what is going to be the future of root canal sealers. So, in this video, uh, let's discuss both uh, the traditional sealers and also the new bioceramic sealers and is it time for all of us to shift to the bioceramics. Thank you for watching this video. Selection of an appropriate root canal sealer is of utmost importance in clinical anodontics and also to know about the different types of sealers in the market. And also we'll be talking about the recent paradigm shift to bioceramics and is it important for each one of you to shift to bioceramic based obturations. So there are numerous sealers in the markets. So we are not going to talk about the different brand names of sealers, but let's talk about the scientific classification of sealers. So first we need to understand why we do obturation in endodontics. After, even after sufficient cleaning and shaping is achieved, we should understand that it's not 100% possible to eliminate all the microorganisms from the root canal. So, in infected root canals, there is still some amount of bacteria that is going to be left behind. So, the goal of my obturation is to create an environment which is completely packed and there is no much space left for the bacteria to multiply and grow. And also, the my obturation should possess some antibacterial efficacy and also properties that will inhibit the further growth and multiplication of the leftover microbes and it's important to create a good coronal seal and a good bonding between my obturation material and the root dentin and also the sealer and the core material so that there is no coronal leakage or if at all there is some coronal leakage it's going to take a very long time for it to cause failure of the root canal treatment. Also equally important is the apical seal that is achieved. So this is the aim of any obturation that we do and we are left with two options. The core and the core filling is called the core material and also we have the sealants to cement this core material to the root canals. So without doubt since 1847 gutta percha has been the go-to material to fill the root canals as a core material and it is here to stay. But among sealers, there has been a huge number of sealers that has been introduced. So, rather than going by brands, let us just classify it based on the composition of the sealers. So, basically sealers can be classified here. You can see the one above the line. They are called as the traditional sealers and the last or the recent trend of sealers that is called as bioceramic sealers. Let's see one by one. First thing that you should know is the sealer that you should never use for your clinical endodontics which is uh, popular in this subcontinent where some of we are used to using the zinc oxide powder and eugenol which is generally recommended for a temporary filling. So people have the habit of diluting it or making it into a thinner mix and use it for root canal sealer. But this is not a proper sealer. And and if at all if somebody is using this, it has to be discontinued immediately. So the ANSI and ISO standards have set some guidelines for a sealer to meet some standards. First of all, the film thickness of my sealer should be less than 50 micromillimeters. And the solubility should not be more than 3% by volume of its final set cement. And the flow rate should be greater than 17 mm and the radio opacity should be greater than 3 mm aluminum so that the sealer can be seen on your post-operative radiograph adequately. So the first classification of sealer is the zinc oxide eugenol based sealers and uh, the, it's one of the most popular sealers in the past. It was predominantly recommended by people who are using the thermoplastic obturation. As you can see there is less post-operative pain compared to other sealers and it has very low shrinkage and it also has some antimicrobial activity for the first few hours. 
But the main drawback of the zinc oxide original base sealers is that they have the maximum leakage over time and also has a very high solubility. So some of the popular brands of zinc oxide original base sealers are the pulp canal sealer, the endomethasone AN, also the tubely seal, etc. So the slight modification of these sealers also incorporated calcium hydroxide, they are called as the calcium hydroxide based sealers like Sealapex. But a recent uh, study uh, concluded by using a meta-analysis method that both zinc oxide original base sealers and calcium hydroxide base sealers are significantly biotoxic compared to the next most popular sealer called the epoxy resin based sealer. So the epoxy resin based sealer almost ruled the endodontic field from the beginning of uh, the millennium and till date. So the advantage of an epoxy resin based sealer it has got very less solubility, excellent film thickness, the flow is amazing and it can penetrate as deep as 2 millimeters two millimeter into the dentin tubules and it also is shown to have a very high bond strength to dentin, easy to handle, it has very long working time and also has a very good radio opacity. But the only question mark of uh, these, these uh, resin based sealers are that are they hydrophobic and can they wet the dentin and they do not have any bioactivity. So epoxy resin based sealer the most popular brand called this AH plus is still date considered as one of the standards and it is used as a control when comparing other newer sealers in the market. So this is one of the obturations done with uh, epoxy resin based sealer. You can see the radio opacity, the flow and everything is excellent and it has been very popular since 2000 to 2015 until the resin seal, I mean the bioceramics became popular. There's also been another class of sealers called as the silicon based sealers which have the lowest solubility and even some of the brands incorporate the GP as a filler to it as uh, these sealers are considered to be one of the first in class that slightly expands oil slitting setting compared to the slight shrinkage of the resin based cements. But they are extremely hydrophobic and have very poor wetting ability and that is why the sealers did not become very popular. So one example of this is the gutta flow too. So all these traditional sealers including AH plus they had some limitations they did not meet all the requirements of an ideal sealer so to overcome the drawbacks the thermoplastic techniques were very popular so the aim of this thermoplastic technique or any cold lateral condensation technique is also to have a lot of gp in your obturation and very less sealer that is the whole goal of your traditional obturation method but the biggest question is do we benefit from thermoplastic obturation and a sealer, this traditional sealer obturation method. So according to this study, we found that the time taken for coronal leakage to reach the apical area is just 30 days once the coronal seal is lost, which means the bonding of the sealer to dentin and the sealer to GP in spite of achieving high bond strengths is not great. So the leakage, they are not resistant to leakage. So here came a groundbreaking article and huge transformation. Though the bioceramics have been tested from 2010, 2000 bioceramic based sealers. In 2015, this groundbreaking article was published in which the traditional obturation methods were questioned and the advantages of bioceramic based sealers were discussed in detail. So bioceramics are slightly different uh, from MTA though MTA is also a bioactive material. Recently this calcium, tricalcium based silicate based cements are introduced which do not have heavy metals and bismuth oxide in them and hence they are in a much more purer form. So this is a study, a systematic review again which compared and question if these bioceramic cements are better than epoxy resin based cements and the systematic review concluded that they are better and if not better they are at least equivalent to that of AH plus in properties. Then why do we still need to change from AH plus? 
It is because of few properties that the traditional sealers do not possess. The first one, it's a pronounced antibacterial effect for weeks or sometimes months together after your obturation. Almost like a calcium eroxide like effect where they can penetrate into the dentinal tubules and create antibacterial effect against various microorganisms. The bioceramic sealers are also bioactive in that they induce hydroxyapatite like tissue being formed on the surface that they come in contact with. So the kind of bond between the root canal sealer and the dentin, we call it as intratubular mineralization which can create a much stable, insoluble, long-term sealing ability compared to the traditional obturation method. And with the advent of bioceramic gutta percha, the bond between the GP and the sealer is also found to be much better. And this was the first randomized control trial that was published, a uh, five-year follow-up, and they found that success rate of endodontic treatment increases to 90.9% even in cases with lesions when bioceramic sealers are used with a single cone obturation technique. So this is the paradigm shift in the bioceramic obturation technique where in the traditional method we use a lot of GP and less of sealer whereas in the bioceramic technique the it's predominantly a sealer based obturation since these cements are hydrophilic compared to the hydrophobic resin cement they are hydrophilic they slightly expand on setting and they favor hydroxyapatite formation so they have a true biological bond to the dentin so the obturation itself is predominantly a sealer based obturation and the GP point is just used as a plugger and also as a pathway for future retreatment if at all is necessary. So when it comes to the bioceramic sealer, you need to understand there are two different types. One is the pre-mixed injectable form of sealers. Some of the most popular is the endo sequence or the eye root or the total fill. Uh, it's almost the same formulation that is marketed as in different trade names in Europe and US. The other class of bioceramic sealer is the pyroot RCS from Septodon which is a powder liquid form. So both of these have equally good properties with the uh, injectable sealers having a slightly edge, uh, upper edge over the mixable form as it is very easier to produce a consistent fill of all the intricacies with an injectable premixed state and also the antibacterial effect is slightly pronounced for a longer time. So other brands of uh, uh, bioceramic sealer that are easily available in the Indian market are uh, the one fill MTA and of course the Seraseal from the Meta Biomet. So the injectable form is this and when it comes to the powder liquid form we do have Bioroot RCS in India and we also have Seraseal B which is also a calcium silicate based sealer uh, which is a powder liquid form. So these powder liquid forms have a quick setting time and also studies have shown there's a slightly lower antibacterial effect compared to the pre-mixed injectable form. So that is how it goes. So this is one of my clinical case of a huge massive lesion that had a complete osseous healing in just six months of time. So this is what a lot of mentors and a lot of articles are of late reporting. A quicker healing time compared to the traditional obturation method with bioceramics and a slightly uh, significantly improved clinical success rate as well. So another case in just uh, six months, uh, we can see the biological healing happening with bioceramics and this is another case with a six month follow up in a retreatment with a case with a periapical lesion. So the question is, do we have to shift to the bioceramics or is my traditional obturation method okay? So there are different schools of thought and some personal opinion people might still tell you that uh, a bioceramic technique may not be needed as the traditional methods are doing good. But let me tell you that this whatever I am presenting now is not my personal views. These are based on literature and evidence and today in medical field to practice we need to do something called as evidence based decision making. 
So looking at the way things goes, looks like the bioceramic is the present and the future of endodontic obturation. So we need to understand that the only thing that is constant is change. So change is inevitable and people need to accept it and embrace it in your practice. So in my further videos, I'm going to come up with the obturation technique with bioceramic based sealers. So thank you for all the support and encouragement. And these are the platforms in which I share my educational content. So let me see you all in my next video that will be on the obturation technique with the bioceramic sealers. Thank you for watching.